and I've been looking for ways to grow even beyond the content creation side of blogging. So as much as I'm creating blog posts or Instagram posts to you know, feed my community in a sense, um, I'm also looking at creating products. And so um, you know, I think as you grow as a blogger and you recognize that you're actually building a brand, that's when you can start looking into other um, revenue streams and other opportunities that complement what you're doing. Can you share a little bit of the backstory behind how you built your brand? Yeah, well, and I love that because it definitely was my mess. I, <laughs> <laughs> I actually had been doing PR and marketing for many years mm -hmm. and going about my business. And then I got sick. I wasn't feeling well. And I learned that I had celiac disease, which most people know as uh, a disease that you can't eat gluten, right? And all of a sudden, mm -hmm. your life is turned upside down when you're told you can't eat this entire food group that you've loved dearly your whole life, you know, living on pizza most of my life. Um, it was it was really shocking and all-consuming to me. And even after losing gluten, I still didn't feel well. I still had mm -hmm. health troubles. And so I decided I needed to figure this out, started to read more, enrolled in the Institute for Integrative Nutrition and started to learn about nutrition and how to heal my body and just changed everything. Like I no longer wanted to do what I was doing in the past. I wanted to really focus in on healing myself and helping others. I felt like I had all this important information to share and important things to say and I wanted to get it out in the world world. And so here I was in my mid thirties at that time and ready to just throw away this career that I had built and move into this new um, world of gluten-free living. And, and, you know, like you were saying, and many podcasts in the past, you know, there's riches and niches. And I just felt like I, I just, there was this underserved niche on how to be healthy and gluten-free. And that's where I wanted to go. So you went through both a personal and professional kind of pivot at the right. same, like these are happening at the same time. So same time. Um, you're learning this stuff about your health and, and, and how to take care of yourself. What about the professional side? Were you like, yeah, I'm going to go make money doing this. Did you know it was possible? Were you like, I'm going to become this big blogger or something like that? Was that kind of your intent <laughs> early on? Um, not, well, Maybe a little in a okay. sense that I came from a marketing background. And so in the marketing world, I had been working with bloggers and influencers and a lot of them were doing so well. And I knew that I could do that too. And as much as I wanted to leave my, you know, everyday career in a PR agency, I felt like, you know, you can take the girl out of marketing, but you can't take the marketing out of the girl, right? Like I still had those skills and I still loved marketing, but now I was ready to do it for myself and grow my own business and my own personal brand and my own platform. And so um, I did want to be successful at this. Um, I you know, knew I was leaving behind a job and money and security um, to kind of go off into this new venture and start this new business. Um, but I, I wanted to be successful at it. And so, you know, I obviously put a lot of things in place to help me be successful. And, and something I've mentioned to you before is I started a bloggers group here in Denver because I just wanted to learn what other bloggers were doing. I wanted to see how they were being successful. And I always joke, like maybe I could, you know, rub their heads and some of it would rub off on me and I could figure out what it took to be a successful blogger, not only for creating a business for myself, but like I said, I had, I felt like I had important things to, to say that hadn't been said in this world and I wanted people to hear it. So I love that you're talking about blogging because blogging has, at least in the, in the circles of marketing that I'm in, has kind of fallen out of favor, right? <laughs> people don't talk about it as much, right? And they don't blog as much. Everyone does a podcast, right? Everyone does, right. you know, some YouTube channel, whatever it is. And I'm like, I built my whole business on blogging. Um, right. I didn't have a ton of traffic or anything like that, but that's where I learned how to hone my ideas. So um, would you still consider yourself primarily a blogger? Is that what you would say? Right. It's, it's complicated. It's sort of like 
there might be a little bit of a taboo about like a blogger or an influencer. And I do think mm -hmm. there are some people who have kind of ruined it for us. You know, there's these bloggers out there who are just doing it to be Instagram famous. Mm -hmm. And it does drive me a little bit <laughs> crazy, you know, like I'm not on Instagram showing off my latest spray tan, which I'm not, um, <laughs> but I'm there to share important information and, and, and help my community survive and thrive on this gluten-free diet that we all have to have as a medically necessary diet. Um, so yes, I do consider myself a blogger. I put a lot of effort into my blog and, um, and creating content that is important to my community. And I am really proud that I can make a living doing that. At the same time, I also consider myself a brand or a business and I've been looking for ways to grow even beyond the content creation side of blogging. So as much as I'm creating blog posts or Instagram posts to, you know, feed my community in a sense, um, I'm also looking at creating products. I just launched, even this week, I just launched a whole meal planning service, you know, like oh, cool. when you are gluten free, you don't even know what to make for dinner or you don't know what to eat half the time. I used to just like eat a scrambled egg and an apple because I was like, I don't know what to eat. Everything just looks so scary to you when you mm -hmm. have to look mm -hmm. at food through a new lens. And so, um, you know, I think as you grow as a blogger and you recognize that you're actually building a brand, that's when you can start looking into other um, revenue streams and other opportunities that complement what you're doing. I love that. So um, when you talk about building a, a, a blog, I know that you really stand for like raising the bar of professionalism. Yes. Thank you, please. For goodness yes. sake, please. I'm <laughs> like you, you know, coming from a marketing background, both of us were probably like two peas in a pod, right? Cause there's like a lot of things that I, content is great, but you got to frame it. Like you, it's got to look good. It's got to read well, all that sort of things, uh, all those sort of things. So I know like you are known in the marketing world for like, organic traffic and you do it like the right way, which I love. Right. Um, right. So when you talk about building a, a blog and a brain, can you share some of your, like some of what you've learned on how to build this tribe and what you did intentionally to just kind of grow and make sure this blog was, you know, as, as much as you knew how to be successful. Can you share some of that right. with us? I want oh, to know. Man. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Fire away. As you said, Oh man, I get the notebook well, out. I'll get it. All right. Here we go. Okay. <laughs> I was going to say, if I could do it all over again, I would have done it right from the start. Obviously, okay. I fumbled through it a lot and mm -hmm. I've learned a lot along the way. But I think that a lot of bloggers start a blog as a hobby and then they realize, well, maybe I do want to be successful at it. And um, you can't just journal about your life. Um, that is not going to necessarily get you tough. There's very few bloggers that make it just, you know, journaling about the mundane life. Um, that's more of, of keeping an online journal for your friends and family to see who maybe don't live nearby. But when you are blogging for business, it's really about creating a plan of attack for what kind of content you want to create, who you're creating this content for, and not feeling, you know, not getting on that hamster wheel, wheel where you have to, where you have to create content every day and constantly that no one is reading um, I even did this SEO audit um, with an expert and he was just like, you have a lot of like junk articles on your website. Like nobody has read this article or even looked at this recipe in years. And he, you know, gave me great advice, like get rid of it, take it off your site because, mm -hmm. you know, if Google is looking at your site and they see a hundred articles that, um, and only 10 of them are really being read, Google's going to think, you know, you got, you're a 10 out of 100. But if you have 10 articles and all 10 of them are getting read, Google's going to think you're, you know, this 100% rock star. Mm. And so really, you know, wishing I had done that from the start, that the, that the content I created would all be great content. And right now, like I go through the weeds and get rid of old content, fix up new content. And even talking to some of the other bloggers who are really successful, um, they talk about seeing their blog as a project, you know, like here are a hundred articles that I have researched with SEO or with my community that I want to create. And once I create those articles, my blog is done. And now I just go back and update it and, and keep it as this great resource for others to, to utilize and see over the years, but I don't feel like I have to create new content every single day.